What makes Alton, Illinois one of the most haunted towns in America? Let's explore a few of its haunts and find out. Welcome to Friday Night Ghost Frights from Haunted Road Media. I'm author and ghost story and Mike Ricksecker. Explore with us. McPike Mansion is considered one of the most haunted places in Alton, Illinois. Originally built in 1869, it was home to Henry Guest McPike, who was known in winemaking for his McPike grape and his family. He was a close personal friend of Abraham Lincoln, sat on the podium during the Lincoln-Douglas debate in 1858, and served as mayor of Alton from 1887 till 1891. During McPike's life, the mansion and the 15 acres around it were known as Mount Lookout, and when he passed, the funeral services were held under the grove of trees that he cared for in his later years. The family lived in the house until 1936, after which he spent time as part of Brown's Business College, and then as a boarding house by Paul Lakinger, who lived there in rented out rooms. By the 1950s, the house was abandoned and fell derelict until 1994 when Sharon and George Ludke bought it on auction and have been restoring it ever since. Sharon is on record as having seen the spirit of Paul Lakinger standing in a window wearing the same outfit as in a photo she has of him. The ghost of a former servant named Sarah is also said to haunt the house, while the sounds of footsteps and disembodied voices are heard throughout the cellar. So we were wandering the grounds where a lot of activity usually happens and I was in the backyard with my friend Missy Nichols who is a psychic medium who visits often and happened to be glancing up at one of the windows of the house and saw some movement up there. While we were in the yard close by what Missy refers to as a little girl named Abigail that she senses uh, near the crypt that's on the property, which nobody really knows who's buried there. She refers to this spot as Abigail's fairy tree, and there is definitely some energy of a little girl back there. Uh, the time that Sharon, the owner, uh, actually allowed us to step foot inside the house. The three of us were standing in the doorway in the foyer and very distinctly heard footsteps in one of the upper levels, possibly the second or the third floor, and there was nobody in the house at that time. Denise Pridemore, who volunteers at McPike Mansion, has also had a number of paranormal experiences while there. We had dinner at a local restaurant before McPike. I paid for dinner with my debit card, and Ron made a big deal about the placement of the card in my clamshell wallet because I had a habit of just throwing it haphazardly in my purse, so I ensured that it was placed inside the wallet and clamped shut. At McPike, we proceed to the wine cellar for an extended dark session. Sandy and Sharon proceeded to turn off all the lights. It was so dark you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Everyone in the cellar was talking about seeing lights floating around when suddenly I felt something on my lap the size of a child and something messing with my purse between my feet. I spoke up about the feeling on my lap and Sandy told us about the children's spirits. I felt quite a bit of movement on my lap and between my feet and knees for about five minutes and then it stopped. Later I got into my purse and wallet and my debit card was gone. The wallet was still clamped shut and the change was still in it. At the very bottom of my purse was the debit card and other items that were proven in the wallet at 6 p.m. but were not at 10 p.m. The Lutkeys originally intended to restore McPike Mansion as a hotel, but the federal, state, and local grant money they were assured at auction never materialized. All the restoration funding has been provided through donations and tours. The First Unitarian Church is said to be haunted by Reverend Philip Mercer, who committed suicide there in 1934. Even the building location is suspect since St. Matthew's Catholic Church burned down there in 1853, and in 1905, the first incarnation of the First Unitarian Church also burned down. Some try to say that Reverend Mercer was murdered, stating that his office had been ransacked, but the official word back in 1934 was, the desk table of the minister in the study was somewhat littered with papers, as though he might have run through them shortly before death. That's not exactly a ransacking. 
Those close to him said that he had grown despondent, wasn't his usual talkative self, was perspiring unusually during his final service, and said that he hadn't been feeling well. He had been strung up from the transom leading from the Sunday school room with both his sash and a piece of hemp rope that had been newly purchased. Since Reverend Mercer's death, shadow figures have been seen throughout the church. Disembodied voices are heard at times, doors open and close on their own, and the sound of a piano playing can sometimes be heard coming from the sanctuary. Reverend Mercer was fond of music. The haunted Milton Schoolhouse was built in 1904, originally a four-classroom limestone and brick structure expanded upon a number of times. The final addition was the gymnasium in 1937, of which we spent ample time investigating during a special live broadcast. There seems to be already be an energy here tonight. As far as energy-wise in this building, because that's what I can tell you the most about, mm -hmm. that's what I'm, I'm good at. There's a man that we've caught, a couple different, couple different people have caught um, over by the basement steps over here. Um, the energy shifts back there, Shauna and I definitely felt it, and, uh, and then it's really playful in here. Who is it that pinched Shauna? Well, if you want to play, that's fine. You can come over here and play a game. What, what's your favorite game? So we're going downstairs. Uh, for those of you that are watching us, we should be, we should remain live, but just to let you know, you know, we're getting down further into the structure a little bit. So if we lose you, that's, that's why, but we should yeah. be okay. Something about this spot, huh? It, it's not it's normally not. there. It's not. I don't know what it is. It just. Well, it doesn't have to be bad. It's yeah, just. It's, it's, the, it just is what it is. Yeah, it just is what it is. There. Like before you. Yeah, yeah walk like in. right out here. And this is normally not here. See, and I'm, even as I'm walking, I'm getting like the spider webby tingly. Yeah. On my hands. And this is the thing. Like I just got my leg touched. Okay, so um, what I normally experience here are two little girls, okay? Okay. And they're in, they're, they normally come up and they like to hold your hand, so you might feel that. One of our most interesting paranormal experiences at the schoolhouse was with Buford the cat. As it tracked us down into the bowels of the basement, we heard the sound as if someone had fallen on the stairs, and then the cat did something very unusual. There's the cat. Cat found us all the way down here, huh? You okay, Buford? Whoa. Did you hear that? Yeah, what was that? It sounded like somebody falling, like a guy. We were like, ooh. Whoa. But it's just totally blocked off up here. And that's a window. And the cat's coming right up here. Well, what's going on? You okay? Uh huh. What's up? What are you what are you picking up on? What? It's this, this cat's like staring at me. <laughs> okay. Let's go back downstairs. Come on. Come on. What's up? Come on. Come back down. Come on. Come on, buddy. That was really weird. Are you trying to tell us something? What's going on, honey? So what's the source of all the paranormal activity in Alton? Some say it's the Old State Penitentiary. It originally opened in 1833 and officially closed its doors in 1860. But in 1861, it was reopened to be used as a prison for Confederate soldiers during the Civil War. Nearly 12,000 prisoners passed through its doors over the next three years, and conditions were terrible. Overcrowded with inadequate sanitary facilities, many died of pneumonia and dysentery. Infectious diseases like smallpox and rubella were commonplace. Deaths totaled over 1,500. 
When the war ended, the prisoners were released and the prison was no longer used. It was slowly dismantled over the next several decades. Only one corner of an exterior wall remains. Many believe that the use of the prison's cursed stone blocks for construction around Alton is the source of much of the town's paranormal activity. But is that really the case? And I've learned some new things about that prison too in the last couple of months. You know, a lot of people like to tell the story that when the prison was torn down after the Civil War, that the materials used in the prison, and I'm guilty of having repeated the story too because I had heard it, that those materials were used throughout the community. Well, they were and they weren't. A lot of the prison walls weren't torn down until the middle of the 20th century. A lot of people took some stones from the wall to use as landscaping material in their yards and in their gardens. A big chunk of the prison walls that was ground down into gravel was used to pave streets but over in Missouri. They weren't used to pave the streets here in Alton. I, I think because you've got the river, you've got the Confederate prison, the tragedy of Elijah P. Lovejoy, you've kind of got all of these things coming together. To hear some people tell the story of the prison, right after the Civil War, the prison was torn down and crumbled and used throughout every street in this town and is the foundation material for many of the buildings. That may very well be, but it's not nearly as um, prevalent, I think, as some people would like it to be. What I have recently learned is a lot of the prison brick, those limestone brick that was used on the outside of the prison. When the prison got torn down, it was done incrementally over time and people just went up and took what they wanted and so they used them as cornerstones and gardens. They might have incorporated them into the building of something that they were making, but basically it was just, just gigantic repository of building materials that people kind of came and took what they wanted from. It goes beyond the limestone, Mike. It goes to the energy that that prison experienced and how that energy has spread throughout all of Alton and, and the greater Riverbend area. Um, there is little doubt in, in a visitor's mind when they come to this town, when they walk down the streets or they go to tour an old historic home, something feels different here. Or does the town suffer from disturbing the graves of 300 soldiers who died on a quarantine island just off the shores of Alton? were buried there. In 1935, Sunflower Island was leveled to make way for a dam, and the bones of the soldiers were unearthed. Claims exist that some of the bones ended up in the earth dike that was used in the construction of the dam, while some bones were still being washed up years later. In an ironic twist to this episode, Henry McPike once owned this island. In fact, he owned it while the bodies were present and he turned into a picnic spot. And it's the same island in which his good friend Abraham Lincoln had his infamous duel with James Shields. Alton is full of haunted connections. Then there's the old Mineral Springs Hotel, which we've covered extensively here on the Haunted Road Media channel. In what is certainly one of the most haunted buildings in all of Alton, we have encountered a plethora of paranormal activity. So does your name really begin with an H? I would like to point out that we were here earlier, um, and I didn't feel anything yeah, down earlier here. Today. We were here with um, a couple of my very dear friends. Oh, that was a little bigger off over there. Yeah, that's what I say. Like the way off kilter. Yes. Chairs moved, or it was like a scraping sound. You move one of these chairs. I think for anyone to unequivocally say there's Confederate prison limestone in the basement of Mineral Springs, it can be tough to prove. It's also going to be tough to not prove it. Where are you from? How old are you? 30? I thought I heard 33. 33? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and take a look at this. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a, um, oh, that's a vortex. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I've shot that in there before. Yeah, wow. and this thing came, it just rushed up on me from, from behind when I was taking a picture. <laughs> For a more in-depth look at historic Mineral Springs Hotel and other haunted Alton locations, please check out our videos off to the side. I'm Mike Ricksecker. Until next Friday night.